Hello, everybody, wherever you may be. My name is Larry. My call sign's Kilo 7 Hotel November. I'd like to welcome you back to my shack here in Northwest Oregon. This is Ham Radio Live show number 80. It's a big show. Should be a good show. Going to cut back on the gain here. Sorry, my friends. A little, little high there. Welcome. It's nice to see everybody here. Today is Friday, the 20th of November, almost Thanksgiving. Next week, Turkey Day. Should be a lot of fun. My very best Thanksgiving wishes from my family and I to all of you. I'd like to welcome you back. First show after surgery, I have a handy-dandy little uh, pillow here stuffed in with an ice bag to my side. Apologize for my voice. It's just the way it is here after surgery, so please forgive me. I want to, first of all, ask you to please subscribe to the channel. This channel is here to help young hams, future hams, people who are new to ham radio to get the most out of it and to get licensed. That's our main mission here. But today's show is very special. It's about an antenna that you can actually put on your property that you should be able to put on your property unless you have huge antenna restrictions that can give you directionality in 20 meters and on the 40 meter band together. Yes, imagine, now it might not seem like that's really hard to do. It is. Take a look. Go on your search engines. Take a look around. Now, for most folks, when you look at radio antennas that are hex beams or Yagi's log periodics, unless you home brew one, you're looking at some expense, okay? You, first of all, need to get it up in the air. You need to be able to make it work. That's what you need. But to get 20 and 40 on one beam is really hard to find. I know. I've looked. So I want to welcome you here. We're going to go through some stuff on the best directional antenna, I believe, is in the marketplace right now. I believe it is the MFJ1848. I've built it. I don't have it tuned yet. That's the only thing that caught me before surgery. But I have built it. And I do know how to build it. We'll do a full video series on how it's built. It'll be a full one video on assembly of the 1848. So you'll know how it's built. It'll be built per factory specs. The only change that I made in it was in one hex bolt. I exchanged a hex bolt for a hex screw. That's all I did. Made it simpler to install for me. And I'll tell you about that when we get to it. But talking about price for beam. Let me show you what's out there right now, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. The first thing you're going to need to do is get yourself something to get it in the air. If you want to put it on a roof, you can do that, but you'll need to have something strong enough to hold it. That's the big deal because many directional beams are very long and they're very heavy. That's where the kicker is. For example, to start out to put in your backyard, if you can do that, your neighbors aren't too close around you. So if the tower does come down, it's not going to crush somebody's roof. You can go into something like this from U.S. Tower, the TX-438. That one's 35 feet high. Now, it's not optimal for 40 meters, but you can buy one. $3,905. Okay, so that's what's going to set you back to buy that tower. Again, we're talking about directionality, getting a beam on 20 and 40. Everything else is a bonus. 20 and 40 is the minimum requirement. We want to work daytime and nighttime frequencies right now in the current sun cycle. But again, please forgive the voice. It's just from the surgery. So that's what we start with. 38-foot tower, U.S. tower. That's almost $4,000, okay? So we start with the U.S. tower piece, and now we've got to go ahead and we got to get an antenna, right? Well, we can start with an OptiBeam. Notice that's six elements. Only three bands. There's only three. You get 20, you get 15 and 10. 40 and 20 aren't here. You've got to get 40 and 20. The Opti Beam's not going to work. Now, you can go to an Opti Beam if you want to spend, you know, over $8,000, but we're trying to make this for the average ham to try and get it on their property in an affordable way that's reasonable to put up on a space restricted property. There's some big issues there, right? Because a lot of us live in that situation. We live in suburbia. We live in a place that has houses close together where we can't put up big towers. Some people can, and that's great. Nothing wrong with that. I'm talking to the majority of hams out there that can't because the majority of hams can't do that. 
but now with the 1848 by MFJ, you can. Let me go on with what we have to do. If we're going to build the common multiband 2040 directional antenna to get you on the air and get you on the air effectively. Okay, so now you have your tower. You got your U.S. tower, 35 foot. You buy maybe the E antenna, DY. I think it's the, uh, can't read it very well here. Sorry, guys. Try to do my best. The Mini 4B, the DY Mini 4B. That includes 40 through 10. Now, it's not going to include 17. It won't include 12. It won't include 6. And it doesn't include 30. But it does include 20 and 40. Okay. Now take a look. It will do full maximum power. Look at the wind surface area here, okay? Now, if you don't know for sure where that is, it's right there in the middle where it says wind. It says, sorry, excuse me. It says uh, wind surface area, 12,340 square feet. Now, what that means to newer future hams is that's going to mean you're going to need a pretty heavy-duty rotator with a very strong thrust bearing. Thrust bearing is going to make sure that it doesn't move when the wind blows. It locks in place. That's what the thrust bearing does. Your brake is there to make sure it stops and stays stopped. They work together. It's kind of like a, it's almost like a clutch and throw up bearing in an old clutch from the old days. All right. So now you've got yourself your, your antenna. Let's say you want that antenna. Okay. So you want the, the E antenna, the mini, right? This is the only for 40 and 20, which is our prerequisite, you get 15 and 10 included, okay? So you buy this antenna, and then you get the price of it. The price of the antenna is over $1,600. It's $1,685.98 right now. So you pay almost $1,700 for just the antenna. You get four bands. And you also have something that weighs 72 pounds, sorry, 71 pounds with a 12,340 square foot wind load. That means you need a big rotator. It means you need something heavy duty, okay? So you get that. You now have your antenna. You've bought your tower. You have to pay for the concrete, the rebar, the permits, and hopefully your neighbors are far enough away that that tower is not going to sway or give any problems to, any, to anybody because you're going to have a 71-pound antenna swinging around on top of that, okay? The next thing you're going to need is you're going to need the rotator. A rotator for this type of antenna is going to cost you right about $1,600. This, uh, this is actually, this is from a company. It's called Array Solutions. It's comparable to the old Orion 2800. They don't make that any longer, but it's similar to it. This is good for large multiband Yagi's and Opti beams. Okay. So this is 1600 bucks. Now this is before you pay for tax. Adam, you're welcome. You're welcome. This is a subject long, far due. And I've wanted to do it before the surgery. I just for, I couldn't just forgot to be honest. It's my fault. So when you're out all of this, not counting permits, concrete, all the work to do this, to get yourself a directional, and most hams use dipoles or verticals. You may not believe that. And for the hams that use Yagi's and Opti beams, you're very blessed to be able to use those. You've got the money, you've got the ability and property, you, you can do it. That's great. Nothing wrong with that. Good for you. But for all the rest of us, we'd like to have a directional too. MFJ's come up with a way to do that. I want to tell you a little bit about it. This is why I've been so excited about the 1848. I think it changes ham radio huge because it gives all of us the chance to have a directional beam finally that includes 40 and 20 and it won't break the bank. Out the door, cost before tax for all of this, including, I don't know what your permit cost would be for your tower base and putting it up. I have no idea. But your total cost for this project, I figured based on retail before tax, between $6,950 and $7,000. That's an inexpensive directional beam that includes 20 and 40. That's about as cheap as you can get until this came along. Now let's move to the 1848. Okay, the MFJ 1848 is a eight band hex beam antenna. 
6, 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, and 40 meter. It handles 1,500 watts. Notice the price, $779.95 before tax. Now, I've built it. The quality is there. I'm telling you, it's there. These are very high quality fiberglass spreaders. They use stainless steel parts. If you build it per spec, as described, it will work very well for you. I'll have a full instruction video on how this thing's assembled once I feel a little better, okay? Just give me a few days. Let me, let me lick my wounds a little bit from this surgery. By the way, feel better too. It made a difference right after surgery. All right, next, you need a mast. You don't need to buy a tower for this. It's light enough that you don't need to. Ah, oh, hey man, Alexander passed his exam for foundation license money. That is the base license in Great Britain. Alexander, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man, Alexander, you made my day. Thank you, man. See, that's what we like to hear on the channel because we're here about trying to help people get on the air. Congratulations, man. Thanks, Alexander. My very best mate. Thank you very much, buddy. Thank you, mate. That's great stuff. Congratulations. Welcome to Ham Radio, Alexander. That's great. All right, so we've got the hex beam. The hex beam's about 780 bucks before tax, right? You've got a directional beam now. 20, 30, 40, 17, 15, 10, 12, 6. They're all there. You've seen the reviews on the 1846. If you've been watching any kind of YouTube reviews, check on the MFJ 1846. This is the same antenna with longer spreaders. That's the only difference. The spreaders go out farther. It includes the ability to add the 30 and 40 meter bands. It's exactly the same, including that piece, those extra legs on the spokes. It's the same antenna. It just gives you a little bit wider area to work with so the wire can go out there long enough to work 30 and 40 meters. There's a couple of other little things in there that make it a little different as well, but it makes it work 30 and 40 directionally just as good as that 1846 does on 20. All right, let's continue. Remember, we're at 69 to $7,000, cheapest price for a 20 and 40 meter directional beam. By the way, this is going on my roof. This isn't going on some giant tower. I'm putting it in the center of my roof on an MFJ adjustable mast, 10 feet high. That's it. The first four feet, basically, well, I guess it's eight feet. So the first four feet will support the rotator. The next four feet go from the rotator to the antenna. That's it. It's guide at the bottom before the rotator, and from there on, it is ready to roll. It's really easy to build. If I wasn't disabled, I could have built it quickly, but I have to work slow because of the way my back is. Let's continue, okay? So, you buy the antenna, okay? The next thing you need to do is take a look at one thing. Remember, we talked wind load. Now, this is the this adjustable base. This here is the 1904 HD. These are fiberglass. Each one of them locks in place. I completely have solid faith in this product. They, these things are virtually indestructible. It would take, I mean, you could run over with your truck and crush it, but you're not likely to do that. It's strong as an ox and they will stand up to 55 mile per hour winds. I know because mine has at 48 feet high. All right. So now you've got to buy the mast. The mast costs about $179. So you've got your, your antenna, your antenna is about 780, the mast is 180, and you gotta buy a good rotator. This rotator will do more than twice the wind load of that antenna. That antenna has a 3.5 square foot wind load. That's it. It's aluminum spreaders and wire, that's it. Here's the high gain CD 45II. It is an excellent rotator, well reviewed, well used. It's been out forever and it has been a dynamic success, $460 before tax. That's it. You put this all together, you throw it onto an aluminum mast, excuse me, onto a fiberglass mast, you put the rotator on it, you put the next section up, that goes to the antenna so the rotator can spin the antenna. You're only up eight feet 
off of your roof. You use a base plate like by Easy Up, or you can use something that will attach to your uh, your chimney mount, your chimney, whatever you might want to use. You can use as long as you got a place to connect to the base. That's all you need. Or you can use something in the backyard. You can put a pressure treated four by four in the ground, stick some concrete in it, and then attach the base to that. Adjust the base up as high as you want to. You'll be able to use a directional beam at 30 to 40 meter band, 30, 40, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, and six. Total price, under $1,500. Folks, what can you do with an extra $5,500 in your pocket? You're going to have a directional antenna that's going to work you 40 and 20. It's the lowest priced beam on the market right now with what it does. There's nothing close. The MFJ1848 is, I think, the best buy right now and, and is brand new. It's literally brand new. You can get in this and get it built in a weekend and it's easy to adjust SWR. You just move the little insulators along the spreaders. It helps you adjust SWR that way. If you want to cut it, you can cut them. You can splice them, whatever you want to do, but you can work SWR wherever you want. Set it, forget it. Get it up on your roof and let it spin away. You're using a high quality rotator. It's going to last. You've got a great product that's already been well reviewed in the 1846 series. You just get 30 and 40. Now you get daytime and nighttime for under 1500 bucks. There is nothing, nothing out there. If you're space restricted, if you have no trees on your property, if you need, a, if you'd like to get the best of everything, a directional ham radio beam that includes 20 and 40, there is no better buy on the market than this. There isn't. There simply isn't. My recommendation, huge, buy this. It is well worth every penny. The parts are quality and they will take care of you if there's any problems. I guarantee you they do. I know because I have had problems and they've come right through every time and fixed the problem. No manufacturer is perfect at anything. When's the last time you had a perfect meal at a restaurant, right? Something always isn't quite right. MFJ, 1848. The very best buy there is in the directional beam. In fact, it's the only thing in its class right now that you can get for under 1500 bucks and use it and love every moment of using it. You will never be dissatisfied that you bought that, that antenna. <laughs> then you could spend the extra 5500 bucks on something else, right? Pretty cool. Hey. Happy uh, Friday to everybody. CQ calling. Not sure. And Alexander, thanks. Not sure for the whole show. Thank you. We'll try and work. I want that QSO. Yes. The bad thing is the antenna's in the front yard. And I got to tune it. I got to get it up in the air. We've had some bad storms. Blew our fences down, blew neighbor's fences, blew trees down, all that stuff. And Alexander just couldn't get that antenna up to tune it safely. I don't want to get all the way built and then have it tip and have something go wrong. Just isn't worth it. Just wait, save your time, do it the right way. I, um, I never thought I'd be able to get a directional beam because I couldn't afford the tower. I don't have the space for a tower and I just don't have the availability to put a typical long boom Yagi antenna on my property. You ever seen how long a 40 meter boom is? You ever seen one? We'll take a look and see how long those booms are. If you want to work 40. It might astound you to know that your house is more narrow than the length of that boom. All right, folks, this is all about that antenna because I had to tell you about it because truthfully, it's been on my mind so much that I haven't yet. I think it's the very best buy. And since it's brand new to ham radio, maybe it's something for your Christmas list. The MFJ 1848, it is an eight band directional antenna with gain front to back that will make you smile all day and all night long. Order it from MFJ or your favorite ham radio store. Until next time, when we talk about the best radio for you to buy, and that's an interesting topic. We'll come right back with that on Ham Radio Live. Until next time, God bless you. Thank you for watching. It's been my honor and privilege to bring you to the show. Please subscribe. 
It's the way that new hams and future hams can find the show. And I appreciate you watching. Think about it. A directional antenna can be yours. Until next time. Goodbye, everybody.